Alrighty. Assignment number eight. Uh, despite common knowledge and common decency being frowned upon by all, First Amendment protects it, but to what extent? Having studied the First Amendment for eight weeks now and almost finished reading the Dean Strassen's What Everyone Needs to Know, I feel like I have enough knowledge to speak out on these issues. Um, and as an American, and as an American yourself, we must educate ourselves on the, on the amendments so we know what we can and cannot say as well as do and not do. Um, and with each chapter that come and goes, more and more parts of the amendment get brought up to light and must be studied. So today we're going to be answering three questions. Explain why the First Amendment protects offensive speech, uncivil speech, and extremist rhetoric. Um, so the first one was um, offensive speech. And on the same rails of last week, kind of talked about offensive speech as well and why it does protect it. The Supreme Court can't do much when it comes to punishing someone who merely offended somebody. Um, there's not enough substance to go off of, and as long as there's no physical harm induced, the court can and will not do anything. Strassen goes into this more on page 192. Let me pull up the page real quick. Even though listeners were highly offended by the speech of Jehovah Witnesses preacher Jesse Cantwell, which conveyed a general attack on all organized religious systems as instruments of Satan and injurious um, to man, and even though the court found that his expression would naturally offend most listeners, it nevertheless spurred those facts as purported justifications for restricting the speech. The court hailed the vital role that offensive speech plays in our pluralistic democracy. So just because the guy got offended by what the guy was saying in his religious speech, it doesn't mean this guy can press charges on him and the, and the court of law can um, give him some time. Um, second point is just uh, offensive or um, uncivil speech. Uh, some someone might be uncivil as a call to action if someone is being uncivil to begin with and someone exposes it while also being uncivil then the issue can be brought to light Strassen further explains this as well on page 195 well I found this one very interesting it's a good point that was brought up and I'm sorry if you can hear the lawnmower outside of my window Accordingly, if an individual deliberately chooses to convey a message in an uncivil, even disrespectful manner, that individual choice must be protected. Indeed, the incivility and disrespect may very well constitute integral elements of the substantive message, instead of, for example, messages that protest certain official, unofficial conduct. If a member of the community objects to police misconduct, she may convey her disrespect for the conduct and for the officers who engage in it through intentionally disrespectful language. It's a call to action, and I totally agree. If someone's being uncivil and someone uses uncivil language to call them out, well, I'm totally, I totally agree with that. And it kind of, in a way, cancels it out. So the court uh, can't do much, and it brings the issue to light. And we'll go into that more uh, with this next main point, talking about um, extremist rhetoric. Um, ext extremism could end up save lives. Um, on social media, we see a lot of things that should be uh, deleted immediately. But what if it helps us solve a bigger problem? Once again, bringing more light as mentioned above. On page 187, Strassen goes into how if someone posts extreme content, it could help solve a bigger problem. Um, so we're right back to 187. Um, in the same vein, a 2017 New York Times story described how YouTube, in its effort to purge extremist propaganda, from its platform had inadvertently removed thousands of videos that could be used to document atrocities in Syria, potentially jeopardizing future war crimes and prosecutions. So with YouTube deleting all that, they took away all the, the subject matter that could be used to press charges on, on people. Um, could it, I could definitely see the negatives of it, you know, people being exposed to like gruesome images, gruesome videos, gruesome opinions. Um, but it, it could help in the long run. So the review of my main points I made today, the court will and will not do anything if someone is just offended by something someone said. Uh, but if physical harm is induced, of course, um, with it also being offensive, then the court can punish. Sometimes being uncivil can become civil if the problem at hand is resolved and or brought to light. And similarly, if something seems extreme, especially on social media, whatever the subject of that is, could be resolved if enough people see the problem at hand. Well, I never really thought of it this way, but I do agree. Sometimes a harsh reality needs to be talked about 
And with the First Amendment protecting people that merely want to speak up while also maybe being uncivil and offensive to some, the conversations need to happen for our country to go forward. That's all I got for you. Mm -hmm.